If a big game day is in your future, these sheet pan sweet potato chili nachos are absolutely where it's at. They have all the components you want. You roast the sweet potatoes, you make a quick chili to put on top, you melt cheese over everything and make a big pile of nachos with sweet potatoes. Yeah, it might be healthier, but honestly, it tastes better. Let's make them. To get these ready, what we're starting with is sweet potatoes and we're making them not fully into chips. Like I'm not gonna try to say that these are gonna be just like a tortilla chip, crispy, thin, really like, you know, nice textured. They are really well textured, but they don't hold up the same way. This is kind of a take on a nacho dish that I actually really like, and I love the play of sweet with all the other flavors we're using. So to get these sweet potatoes ready, you can see I'm just taking this sweet potato and just cutting it in nice like quarter inch size pieces. Now the, the key is here, when you get them, you get some nice sized pieces. Obviously some of them are gonna be smaller, some of them are gonna be bigger. It just kind of depends. But what we wanna do is just make sure that we just slice them all evenly because then they bake evenly. So even if they're not the same size diameter, they have that same thickness, so they kind of just bake evenly. Then the important thing is to have them nice amount of olive oil on them because when you're roasting anything, any vegetable, any meat, that oil is super important in that roasting process. It's gonna give flavor and so I'm actually going in with my hands I'm making sure they're coated, tossing them with it, but also just kind of rubbing it all over to make sure it's even. This is what's gonna help them roast evenly, gonna help them actually look better. And then I'm just laying them out quickly into somewhat of an even layer. If they're not perfect, that's okay. But if you have them piled up, if you left them like this, they would steam, they wouldn't roast. And you don't want them to steam because then they're just gonna be really kind of limp, don't have the best in texture. If you put them on an even layer, they can start to brown, especially on the bottom. If you have convection setting on your oven, this is a great time to use it, because what a lot of people don't know is that convection setting, it just turns on a fan or two in the back of your oven. That's all it does, and it moves that hot air around, but you know what that acts like? It's an air fryer, pretty much. It's not the exact same, but it's very similar to an air fryer. So if you have convection setting, use it so they brown a little bit more evenly. Now you can see I have my other pan ready to go. What you wanna do at this point too, season them. Have some salt here. Make sure you season it every layer when you're cooking, especially this, because this is gonna add that flavor. So we're gonna make a chili go on top of this. That might seem odd, but it really ups it. This really could become a meal. Obviously this can work for a big game, or if you're not into big games and just into food, make these because you're gonna enjoy them. So what I'm gonna do now is put them into an oven. I'm gonna let them roast, and while they're roasting, we're gonna put together a really quick, but perfect chili to go on these. While the sweet potatoes are roasting, we're just gonna get a very quick chili ready. Now this is not a normal soup chili. This is not one that you would eat really. It's not gonna be, you would eat it, but it's not gonna be thin like a soup. It's gonna be very thick because we wanna put this on top of these sweet potato nachos. And so you want it to have that right consistency. So what I have here are onions, I have garlic that I've minced, and I have some bell pepper. Now I'm gonna use whatever I have on hand. I have some orange, I have some red. That just happens to be what I have. And I'm gonna put it all into some oil some hot oil and let it start sauteing. So this is gonna go right in. You hear that beautiful noise right away. Always salt your things at every level, a little bit of salt. Now we're gonna add in that pepper with it. And then we're gonna let these saute until they're beginning just to soften a little bit and then move on with the meat. When the onion's translucent, which just means it's softening, you're getting some of that extra liquid out of it. I'm gonna add in this ground beef. And what I wanna do is just let it cook through. So it just takes a couple minutes you can break it up into somewhat bite-sized pieces, and it'll be done. The beef is just cooked through. Now, what I wanna show you is, so a lot of people ask me, like, how do you not have liquid on your beef, or what if you have a lot of liquid? Because you can buy different percentages of lean beef. I like to use usually around a 90%, which means it doesn't have as much liquid usually. You can see here as I'm stirring it, there's not a lot in there, so I just keep it in there. If yours has a lot of excess liquid, drain it off. I like to use more of that 90% so I don't have to, and I keep it all in as flavor. So I'm gonna add in my cumin and chili powder. This is gonna just give us that iconic flavor we need to create a quick chili. And what I'm doing is I'm stirring it into any of that residual oil or fat that's in here because that's gonna bloom those spices. I'm gonna actually bring them out more and instantly I smell them. With that, I'm gonna add in a little bit of tomato paste. That just drives home a deeper tomato flavor, a richer, sweeter almost tomato flavor. And what I like to do is make sure I can cook that a little bit. So I stir it into the meat, and you wanna see how it's just starting to coat everything. And it smells rich even. You're smelling that kind of sweet, condensed tomato flavor, because that's what tomato paste is. So while that's just beginning to wanna to cook on the bottom of the pan, I'm gonna add my last two remaining items. And remember, we're keeping it a thick chili, so I have 
some drained and rinsed kidney beans. I'm gonna put those right in there. And you know what? If you don't like kidney beans, you can use whatever bean you want. You can use a pinto, you can use a black bean. And then a little bit of this, just diced tomatoes with any juices that were with them in the can. So I'm putting that right in there. We're gonna stir it together. And we're just gonna let this simmer very low until those potatoes are ready. You can see the potatoes have roasted. This is what I like. I like when they get that nice browned crisp top and they're starting to get brown on the bottom. That's what that convection can do. Otherwise you just roast at that high temperature and they get like this. So now what I have is my chili ready and you can see it's a nice thick chili. That's exactly what we want. It's a really meaty kind of rich chili. So what I wanna do is start pushing these together just so they're, you know, contained. You don't wanna to try to like have them all separated like that. I like to have a little bit of starting to group them, a little bit of piling, because what we're gonna do is now put this all on one sheet pan, so it's really just gonna become together one dish that we pile and layer. This is the beauty of it, so it's great for a crowd. It's great actually just for a weeknight family meal. It's one of my favorite kind of things just because it's kind of hearty, wholesome, has some health to it, it's really nice. So what we have here are potatoes, and what we're gonna do is just layer them up now with this chili. So there's no perfect way to do this. Just start sprinkling it on. And this is where you can start to customize and think about it. So I am someone that likes some spice. I like some more flavor wherever I can get it. So I'm gonna add, of course, a pepper jack cheese, which you could even go hotter. There's now like ghost pepper jack cheeses and things like that. But whatever cheese you want, if you have, you know, younger kids and they're more in the, like my nieces. I love my nieces, but my one niece thinks cheese has to be yellow. Carson, I'm trying, I'm trying with you. Someday I think we're gonna get her into other cheeses. But if you need to just do a cheddar cheese, a yellow cheddar cheese, do that. Do whatever you have to do. That's kind of the beauty of this. But what you can see is, unlike a normal soup chili, do you see how perfectly this is coming around and just kind of being able to pile? So now what I wanna do on top of this is put the cheese. So we have some shredded cheese here. I always shred my own cheese. I take the grater, I take the cheese and I shred it because then I think it just melts better. I think anytime it's pre-shredded, I don't like usually how it melts. Sometimes the flavor can be off, but when you have shredded like this and you just shred your own, it's softer. And it, to me, it just melts always better. So what you wanna do is get this all the way to the edges there. You still wanna see the sweet potatoes because that's kind of, to me, the star of the show here is those sweet potatoes. And what we're gonna do is layer now on the other layer of sweet potatoes just like you would with if it was chips or something. This will take a little bit. So I'm gonna layer these all on, kind of shingle them a little bit if you need to, it just depends, and then finish up with chili and cheese. I'm finishing up with the cheese. I shredded a little bit more there. And now I'm just gonna put it all over the top. Now again, remember, you wanna buy yellow, the orange colored cheddar, you can go ahead and do that. You can do whatever you want, and that's the beauty of this because the toppings are gonna to be the same. You can garnish it with so many things too. And I'll have a few things to show you what I like to garnish it with, but that's the beauty of this. Garnish it with whatever you want, and that's for your crowd. You can even make a couple trays. See how nicely they look piled up? I love finding ways to enjoy food, and let me tell you something. Chili nachos, delicious. Add that sweet potato element into it, out of this world. So what we're gonna do is put these back into the oven. We're gonna let that cheese melt, and we're gonna eat. After a little bit in the oven, you can see the cheese gets melty. You can turn the broiler on if you want it to start getting browned. Personally, I do love when it gets crispy right here on the edges. Mm, so good. So what we have here is a dish that's ready to go. This can be a snack, this can be with game day food, this can be a whole meal in one, and that's what I love about it. But you wanna serve it up. Now you can use a spatula, cut big squares out of it. You can actually just use a spoon, or the chips usually end up being somewhat sturdy. Some of them you can just pick up on their own, which this is when you can make it your own. You can put chopped cilantro on top. You could have sliced avocado or guacamole. You could put some fresh shredded cheese on top. Personally, I get up my home canned hot pickled peppers. I love a pickled pepper. You know, I love them so much. I'm gonna put one right on top. Um, make it your own. Sprinkle things on, serve it how you want. You can even eat it like chips. Mm. It's so good. the mixture of the flavors, but also the textures. You get a nice crisp crust on all the sweet potatoes, but obviously the interior is smooth and creamy and sweet. When you mix it with that chili powder, everything comes together in that perfect marriage because it has that melted cheese to what? Pull it all together, which is really what it does. So what do I hope you do? I hope you share this video around so other people can see good food is easy to make at home, whether it's for game day snack type appetizers or make it a sheet pan meal for your weeknight meal. 
because that's exactly what this can be. Check my website, wiseguy.com, for this recipe and all my other recipes. They're all on there for you to enjoy. Until then, I hope you eat on this because it's that good.